Hey guys, just before the video starts, a quick reminder that due to the changes to the YouTube Partnership Program, your subscriptions are going to be even more important than before. So if you appreciate or like the content, please subscribe to the channel. The faster we hit the 1000 subscribers, the faster I'll be able to deliver co continuous content to you guys. So now, let's move on to the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. I'm Rick, and today we're going to take a look at another CPU cooler, the Deepcool Neptwin V2. So this is a tower style cooler that we have right in front of us. It's one of the bigger coolers we've looked at so far here on the channel. And I'm pretty excited to see how it does in the tests. So before going any further, let's take a look at the specs. The Deepcool Neptwin V2 has a twin tower style design. It's equipped with six 6mm copper heat pipes and it has a nickel plated base plate. It comes equipped with two 120 mm lead fans, and one of which is PWM compatible. One of the fans has a max RPM of 1300, and the other has a max RPM of 1500. The overall weight of the heatsink is 650 grams, making it pretty heavy. The dimensions of the cooler overall are 159 mm tall, by 126 millimeters wide and 136 millimeters deep. The CPU cooler is compatible with all modern sockets. However, an AM4 adapter kit could be needed if you have one of the older batched kits. So now that we know more about the specs of the cooler, we're gonna jump right into the results. And do stick around till the end of the video because there are a couple of really important things I really want to go over about this cooler and you should know before purchasing it, especially if you're uh, looking at the description of the cooler on their website. So before we get to the exact results, I'm just going to really go over the methodology really quick so to just all of you can understand the graphs that we're about to look at. Now, number one, all CPU coolers are tested on the same open air test bench, which is my Ryzen 3 1200, which is overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz using 1.3 volts. Unless the graph specifies otherwise, and in this case, we are gonna look at a couple of different numbers, uh, the fans are normally locked at 100%, and the results for the temperatures are in delta temperatures. So it's the temperatures above the ambient room meaning that if my room is generally between 23 and 25 degrees Celsius and you see a delta of 30 degrees, that means the CPU was actually running at about 55 degrees Celsius. Um, lastly, for the noise tests, I use my portable sound meter. I place it two feet away from the cooler so that it imitates someone who games with their tower on their desk, which is sort of a worst case scenario, which is the noise from the tower cooler being only a couple of feet away from your head. So now that we uh, went over the methodology and you guys can better understand what the graphs are that we're about to look at, let's take a look at the results. Uh, let's start with temperature. Now we looked at three different things with the, this new cooler. Uh, first of all, the first where you see just the Neptwin with no other explanation, that is the CPU fans locked at 100%. So at 100%, this cooler was giving off 20, it was actually cooling at 25 degrees delta temperature, making it uh, a tie for the best air cooler we tested before, which was the Gamax 400. Uh, the second test where you see the fans locked at 50% basically uh, gave 27 degrees Celsius. Now you'll see further on, I did this test because for a tin twin style cooler like this, you can often run the fans a lot slower and reduce the noise by a lot. So actually it's hanging in there pretty good at 27 degrees Celsius uh, with the fans spinning only at 50% speed. And the last test that you will see in the graph is the test identified as one fan running at 26 degrees Celsius. That's basically, instead of using both fans, I was using only the PWM control, controllable fan uh, in the middle of the cooler. And basically that gave 26 degrees Celsius. Once again, a very strong showing with only one fan, uh, placing it in the top three coolers, uh, air coolers that we've tested. So overall, pretty strong showing. I was actually expecting it to beat the Gamax 400 temperature wise, but it tied it. Um, 
you know, overall can't be disappointed with the cooler. However, it's giving us a few different options as you see. Now let's move on to the noise charts and that way we'll be able to make more sense. So on the charts, this, the coolers will be identified in the same way as they were in the previous one. So if we look at the Neptune with the fans spinning at 100%, it was giving off 51 decibels, which is actually quite high noise wise. Uh, at 50%, we dropped that down to 39 decibels, making it one of the quietest coolers we've actually tested when we were spinning them at 50%. And using one fan, there was actually almost no difference to two fans because the PWM fan is the one that spins faster and therefore noisier. So it was still at 50 decibels, making it one of the noisier coolers with only one fan spinning. So overall, that's a lot of numbers, a lot of situations. Let's place it comparable to the other coolers in the conclusion so we can make sense of where this cooler fits in in the overall design and should we be recommending it or should you be buying it for a system that you're building. So let's move on and take a look at the conclusion. Before we move on to if I suggest this cooler, like I said earlier, there are a couple of things that I really wanna go over about this cooler so that there are no misconceptions on what you're buying and what you're getting. Number one is that it's really important to know that this cooler requires two fan headers for to operate both fans. There is no, um, there's no connector bringing them together onto one uh, single connector. So you have to make sure that you actually have a CPU fan header available and a secondary fan header for the second fan or that you have some kind of fan controller that you can attach it to. Uh, so if you have a very basic motherboard with not a lot of fan headers and you have to run your case, you know, your case fans as well, uh, this CPU cooler can pose you a few problems. And this actually jumps right into what I was explaining earlier. If you look at the Deep Cool website, originally this cooler in its first version, and unfortunately they haven't changed the description on the website, came with a fan controller hub in the box. Something that Deepcool has decided to remove from the contents of the box. And honestly, at this price, which is by the way, about $39 for this cooler, uh, I can't really blame them because a fan hub at $39 for a twin style uh, design like this, it's a really, really competitive price. And they probably just couldn't justify the inclusion of the fan hub at that price. However, it would have been really appreciated that, that on their website they changed the description because the very first line of the description of this cooler says that it's an innovative design allowing you to, P to control both fans in a PWM fashion thanks to the included fan hub. I actually contacted Deepcool over uh, by email about this. Uh, they apologized, but at the same time, they didn't say that they were going to correct the website. And until today, it still has the incorrect description on it. So it's not really a problem I have with the cooler. It's more with the marketing and the presentation of the cooler that I have a problem with. And overall, Deepcool makes some quality products, so I'm not really dissing them. I just think that their marketing or their web the team just hasn't kept up to date with the changes to the cooler and they should really bring attention to that just so that you know customers don't feel misled because if you look at the comments on websites it actually comes up a lot where people were expecting the fan hub and didn't get one so it's important for you guys to know that that is uh, you know that is an issue with this cooler okay so overall what can we recommend this cooler Number one, it's really important also that you know that if you're putting the cooler in the traditional form like this, you can actually wind up, and you should see it on the screen right now, with some RAM clearance issues. Now you can place the fan higher on the stack, but it, it sort of removes a little bit of the efficiency of the fan if you do that to get better RAM clearance. But you can also move the fan to the rear of the CPU cooler on the other side. It's not the best presentation because the LEDs on the front fan uh, become hidden sort of into the heat sink. But overall, it can actually solve RAM clearance issues. But it's important for you guys to know that you have uh, really high heat sinks on your RAM. Uh, you can actually run into those issues if you were placing it in the traditional fashion. Um, but the results don't lie. Honestly, it's a pretty solid cooler at the price. Uh, Personally, just for the extra size and difficulty of installing it in, you know, any case, because you're you're restricted on height, you're restricted on size, um, I still would stick more with the Gamax 400. 
but if you really like towers to a style design if you really like the you know double led fan setup it's really a cooler you can actually look into because the price isn't that bad at 39 dollars and it's actually worth it um, because the performance is it's there and you actually have different options i personally would spin the fans at 50 percent get the 39 decibels making it one of actually the quietest coolers on the you know tested so far and at 27 degrees celsius it actually beats out the previous quietest cooler which was the thermal take contact 12 at 37 decibels but at 29 degrees celsius meaning that this actually keeps cooler and at two decibels of difference you're not even going to no notice the noise difference so it's really whisper quiet when you're running it um when you're running it really at 50 percent so personally i really like this cooler uh, it wouldn't be my, uh, you know, unless you're looking for the aesthetics of the Twin Tower cooler, it wouldn't be my first choice of coolers. But at the same time, if you've bought this cooler, you should not feel bad about it at all. It's a great buy for the price. Uh, it's just maybe outshone by its own product, which is the Gamax 400, which is still giving incredible performance for the price. Uh, at only like about 25 bucks, you get equal cooling to, to this amazing cooler. So overall, that is my uh, recommendation. If you can fit the two fan headers, if you don't mind the fact that there is no fan you know, controller hub included, this is a decent buy. So uh, I hope you guys like the review as usual. Please like, please leave comments down below if you have any other questions. And uh, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.